Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition. I am on the Zooms today with Renee Bayless from the Winchester Visitor Center. As we're recording, Justin hasn't left for his family road trip. But as people are listening, Renee, he is halfway across the country by now, isn't he? Yes, I think he's going to Canada or Pacific Northwest or something like that this year. So it's like, has it been a year since I was on the radio with you and we were talking about him being on his family road trip? It is crazy. And every time he gets ready to leave, I always go into my Facebook and I turn on notifications for his Facebook posts so I can follow along and see where are they and what are they doing. And I... I live vicariously through him. I think those are the best road trips to take are ones that where you're not actually the one in the car. Yeah, I want to do one, but (laughs) not yet. We're going to talk about the Hungry for History food event today, and that's like a road trip, but it's a much more scaled down version because you don't have to drive that far to get to all these places. Right. They're all in Winchester, Frederick, and Clark County. (laughs) So you can pretend you're going on a little mini vacation. It's very educational also. It's an event centered on history and food, and everybody loves food, so... You get to go around and sample different things, and we have a lot of different new things this year, some new participating sites, and we also have a kickoff event this year that we didn't have that last year. Last year was the first year that you did this, so I'm guessing it must have been pretty successful for you to decide, hey, we're going to do it again this year. Yeah, it was really successful. We had a really good turnout, especially at the event we had at the Visitor Center that was on Native American history. And then we had some really good reports from the other sites on how many people came to their programs. So we were really pleased with that and hope to have a bigger event this year. It's certainly a testament to whenever you have food at any event, people will come. (laughs) Yes, yes. And a lot of them are free tastings too. So little samples of things here and there. And then we also have the options of some of them you can purchase food, like a full meal and some different tastings of hard apple cider and things like that too, and cheese and even have one that has candy in their program, historic candy. One of the things that I really like about this event in particular, and you did this with it last year as well, is that you don't try to cram everything into one day. You've got the kickoff event that I know we're going to get details for here in a second, but the event itself is the 24th through September 2nd, August 24th through September 2nd. So it gives people plenty of time to get to some of these places. Right. It's not all one day. You can spread it out. You can attend one thing here. Maybe it doesn't fit your schedule. You can go to something else. So there's lots of options. And it makes it easier on some of the participating venues because they may not be open for every single day between the 24th and the 2nd, but it lets them be a participant because they're open for at least one day during that time period. Yeah. Some of the things go over the whole event and some of them are just one day. Some of them are offering a program several times over the whole time period. Do you have a lot that have returned from last year? Yes, most of the sites returned from last year, and then we had some new ones come on board. A lot of them are volunteer organizations. They're nonprofits. They don't have huge staffs. Some years they can participate, and maybe other times they have to struggle a little bit to get some more volunteers involved. But speaking of nonprofits that require volunteers, Hannah McDonald is joining us as well. She is the director at the Patsy Cline Historic House. Hannah, I'm sure that's always something that you're forever in need of is volunteers so that you can participate in events like this. Yeah, volunteers are a very important part of our organization. And then at that event in particular, our Hungry for History event coincides with our annual Patsy Cline Block Party which we always need a lot of volunteers for. It's our biggest event of the year. For someone who maybe isn't that familiar, they've been living under a rock for the last 30 years. Can you explain a little bit about Patsy Cline Historic House? Where are you guys located? What is your mission? We're located at 608 South Kent Street, where Patsy Cline lived for nine years, the longest place she ever lived during her lifetime. 
It is her family home and we offer guided tours of the home. We're open six days a week. And our mission is essentially to preserve and perpetuate Patsy Cline's legacy and her music and really share it with others who appreciate her. It never ceases to amaze me how known globally Patsy Cline is because we tend to think in terms of A, our own country, and B, we know that she she lived here in Winchester. So we think of her as our own little star, but people from all over the world know who she is and they come there to the house to take a walk through history and get a sense of what her life was like when she was growing up there. Yeah, her life growing up was very humble, working class neighborhood. And we have folks visit from across the globe, Sri Lanka, Norway, Australia, the list just goes on and on how many people heard Patsy Cline's music in their own country and just really want to check out, see where she was from. All of the pieces in her home are period appropriate, but some of them actually did belong to her. You guys have a really good relationship with her other family members and have actual Patsy Cline pieces in the house. Yeah, it's a combination of period pieces and then items that either she used or belonged to her that belong to us or the family. And yeah, it's a really a team effort in terms of showcasing Patsy Cline's life and how she grew up. And it's great that you're participating in this event, too, because sometimes I'm looking at the list of the other participants and you have Abrams Delight Museum, you have the Cedar Creek Battlefield, you have some of these places that we traditionally think of as Civil War era history. But Patsy Cline is modern era history. So it's really cool that we get to experience that. So it's a wide range of history that this event is covering. Most definitely. Her time period set in the 50s and 60s. This year's event for us will feature local history as well, focusing a little bit on Gaunt's Drug Store, which is where she worked for a few years. We do our best to highlight that local history and that Winchester history of, of hers before her national career took off. I have a friend and a client that owns a local auction house and Doc Madigan passed away not too terribly long ago and they were auctioning off items from his estate and a lot of them included things from Gaunt's drugstore and I had to buy something just because I felt like I wanted to have a little tiny piece of that history. Yeah, that was a great opportunity just for anybody like yourself to get a little slice of Patsy Klein history from the drugstore. Years ago, we had Dr. Hunter Gaunt donate several items to us, and then we also got some items from Harold Madigan as well a few years ago. So it's, a again, a team effort really on preserving her memory and her legacy here in Winchester. You guys are doing your event as part of this Hungry for History event on Saturday, August 31st from 10 to 4. What kinds of things will you have there? We're going to have a specialty exhibit that'll feature some of those items that I just mentioned that Patsy Klein once used at the drugstore. She was a soda jerk there. So the program for us is Patsy Klein's specialty soda drinks. And so we'll be featuring that exhibit and also offering these special soda drink concoctions that Patsy Klein once served up at the drugstore. So that includes things like chocolate and uniques and root beer frosties. Everybody can kind of enjoy those drinks as they listen to live country music by regional musicians that'll be there that day. So it'll be a great afternoon on Saturday, August 31st. And people can take a tour of the home for just five bucks that day. Yes. Yeah. Special price tours, five dollars. And you'll get to see those Gaunt's drugstore items as well as her home and hear about her story. She was living at the Patsy Cline Historic House when her national career took off. So it's very significant and more recently became a national historic landmark because of that. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was part of the registry now. Yes. Yeah. In 2021, we received that designation. And all it's all because of Patsy Cline and her, her rise to stardom. She's really an American icon in the music industry. 
Let's take a break. Renee, when we come back, can we talk about some of the other events that are happening between August 24th and September 2nd as part of this Hungry for History event? Sure. Sounds good. We are on the screen for Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition today. Renee Bayless is joining me from the Winchester Visitor Center. Joining her is Hannah McDonald. Hannah is the director of the Patsy Klein Historic House. They are one of the participants in the Hungry for History event. It is happening on August 24th through September 2nd. We're going to find out about more of the participants when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Hello everyone, I'm Stephen. And I'm Kim. We would love to meet you at our new Winchester Cider Works tasting room on East Piccadilly Street in Old Town. That's right. We'll be downtown with great ciders, wine, food and even beer. And the best part is we're so excited to be part of this brand new passport program where you just need four stamps from Winchester area breweries and cideries to get some great free swag. So pop by our tasting room and we'll get you a passport. You can find out more information at Winchester Brew Trail. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Tourism Tuesday, Winchester, Frederick County edition. I am on the Zoom today with Renee Bayless from the Winchester Visitor Center. Hannah McDonald is joining her. Hannah is the director at Patsy Klein Historic House. They are participating in the Hungry for History food event. It is happening August 24th through September 2nd. Renee, we learned from Hannah in the first segment about the cool, fun things that they're going to be doing during this event and the different types of history that they bring to the table for this event. But you mentioned early in our conversation that you're doing a kickoff that's actually the week before the event actually gets started. Yes, it's spread out. So the week before, um, Saturday, August 17th, from 11 to 1, Mike Robinson, who writes the Winchester Tales books, and he's almost a local history celebrity. (laughs) He is. He's going to be doing a presentation at the Handley Library about the history of some of our local taverns in Winchester. And we're having that as the kickoff. So you can find out a lot more information about the events that are to come, get some programs with more details about the event the following week at that event. I always like when we have conversations with Mike Robinson because so many times when you're talking to people about history, it can get a little wah, wah, wah. Right. (laughs) But Mike picks really cool things like the history of the taverns. That's really cool to be able to learn about and understand where they were, how they operated. He does a really good job with that. He does. He gets people involved with loving history that maybe wouldn't typically and he uncovers things that we see every day that we don't think about some of the buildings and just stories untold stories he's very good at that i am particularly partial i follow him on facebook the winchester tales on facebook and i love as someone who was born and raised here i love when he does the then and now photos where it shows a corner that i remember mm-hmm. what used to be on that corner and it's oh, totally something else now and it's a great way to remind people that history comes in all shapes and forms our town has changed a lot and we shouldn't forget about all these places that used to be so He's a great presenter for uncovering that. Do people have to purchase a ticket? When we talked to Hannah a few minutes ago, they're going to do tours that day for $5. And of course, you can purchase the drinks that they're going to be featuring as well. But is there a ticket for the event overall? Or is each individual location maybe or maybe not charging some sort of fee? Right. So each site has their own admission. Some of them have reservations. Some have an event like the Patsy Klein event where you would pay admission to get in and then you get to the program. Some of them are free, so they're all different. Just check the event program or our website, visit winchesterva.com, and you'll be able to find out what each site has, admission or not. Mike is going to do that talk on August 17th at Hanley Library, but then Hanley Library is also participating on August 30th, and they're going to be doing some cider tasting. Right. An author, Diane Flint, is going to be presenting about her book, and it's about the history of the apple industry in the South. And so there's going to be a hard apple cider tasting at that event. That is one that you do need to register in advance. I think on Hanley's website, you can register for that. 
We have two events this year, actually, that are doing hard cider tasting. So if you can't make one, you can go to the other one because the other one is going to be hosted by Clark County Historical Association. And that's going to be at the Burwell Morgan Mill. And they're going to have a history of alcoholic cider in the Shenandoah Valley. And it's British influences with Winchester Cider Works. You mean Nathan is going to talk about I alcohol? Know. That he seems so <laughs> out of character <laughs> for him. <laughs> He works it in however he can. (laughs) He really does. He was on the show a couple of weeks ago for a Tourism Tuesday and was talking about one of the local breweries, Broken Window, which I think is also participating with you in Mm -hmm. this event this year. They got some hops or something ground at the mill in order to make a special right. brew that was mm-hmm. historical in nature. So it really is cool to watch this stuff come exactly. together right here in our backyard. They're doing that again this year. We also have Valerie Hill Winery that's participating this year. So there's going to be beer, wine, cider. <laughs> All of the things. They go with food too. And then you even have LaGrange. A family farm is participating in the event this year. LaGrange Family Farm is going to be having house tours and farm tours. They also have a little petting zoo with dwarf goats. They're really cute. That's going to be on a couple different dates. She has August 31st to September 1st. So you have a couple options to do that. And that's free. She also has a cool, really cool farm stand where she sells produce and soaps and baked goods. That's a really neat place to check out, too, if you'd like to do a farm tour. And then you have some of the traditional places that we would expect to be able to go on an event like this. Bell Grove obviously comes to mind. They've got that really cool Kneading in Silence series that they've been working on. They're participating again this year. Right. They have a couple different programs. And then also their wine festival, they're going to have chef demonstrations. We have the Abrams Delight Museum. They do hearth cooking. And this year we have the Shenandoah Valley Civil War Museum. They didn't participate last year, but they are this year. And they're having a couple interesting programs. One is on historic Civil War candy. And the other one is on prisoner food and food that soldiers would eat, hospital patients and the food that they would eat. So I thought that sounded like, whoa, I've never really thought about what would a prisoner eat during the Civil War. I mean, it can't be good, right? <laughs> sure, they weren't saving the good stuff for them. That's but, true. Uh, they're having those programs. Their programs do have tickets that you need to purchase. So that's one of the sites that does have admission. I was excited when I was looking through the list of all of the people that were participating and what they were going to be offering that day. Stonewall Jackson's headquarters is doing a what's cooking program and Need Bakery, one of my absolute favorite places downtown, is actually making hand pies for you to be able to try while you're at Stonewall Jackson's headquarters. Right. So the museum will be open and then they'll have a special program and you will be able to Try some hand pies from Need Bread. And then you guys are doing a program and an event at the Visitor Center as well. You're going to have all kinds of cool fun things going on there. Yes. So I'm excited about this one a lot. It came about because I've been working with the local Black History Task Force to put up some historical markers. And I don't know why it came up, but we started talking about food. And then I said, you should do a program for our Hungry for History (laughs) event. And it is going to be on the shoebox lunch and the green book. So a shoebox lunch was a lunch that African-Americans that were traveling would have packed themselves to take along on a trip, going to visit their family or whatnot. They would pack this shoebox lunch because they might not have a place that they felt comfortable. They'd be able to go in and have a meal at a counter or go into a restaurant. They had to pack their lunches and take them with them. So we're having a program here by Brenda Nelson and Sharon Dixon, and they're going to be giving the history of the shoebox lunch and also the green book, which was a book that African-Americans could use to find places that were friendly, that they could stop and stay or get something to eat. They're going to have some displays of the green book, and we're going to be having those lunches here that you can purchase from T-Bones Bar and Grill. They're going to have their food truck here. You do need to call ahead 
and reserve your lunch. So we know how many you <laughs> need to have here at the visitor center. You can call 540-542-1326 and just get your name on the list and tell us how many lunches you want. It sounds like a really delicious menu. It's fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, green beans, cornbread, and a slice of pound cake. So that is like a typical meal that they would have packed and sounds delicious. I say it sounds like a meal I'd pack today. (laughs) Learn about that and then have your lunch and enjoy it here. So that's happening on Saturday, August 24th from 1 to 3. But then you'll also have the programs and a whole lot more information about where they can go over the course of the next couple of days for the other places for this event. Even that same day, if you want to hit two programs at once, Abrams Delight right next to us is going to be having their program around the same time we're having ours. So we'll have programs here with the schedule of events so you can plan out your visit. And then you can go to Vault and Cellar, Bonnie Blue. They're going to have special menu items during this time, which makes it really cool too, because you can take a step back away from the history and go get some good food, but be eating history at the same time. Yeah, there's food at Vault and Cellar. They're having some really interesting dinner specials and also some drink specials. They're having glazed pork belly with pickled watermelon rind and rabbit dumplings. Bonnie Blue's having a, a traditional Southern menu with pulled pork and collard greens and pintos and cornbread, banana pudding. I said, I like the banana pudding. Brian <laughs> is a master at part. banana pudding. Yes. If you have not had banana pudding from Bonnie Blue, you have got to get over there and get some. He asked me whether he thought it was too much, if he should <laughs> include that. And I was like, are you kidding? Why would you leave off the banana pudding? <laughs> I would take it above everything else. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so like, forget everything else. And just have the banana pudding. So where can people go to find more information? To look at where everything is happening and what's happening where and map out an itinerary for what order they want to do things. Is all of it on your website? Yes, it's all on our website. When you go to the homepage, visit winchesterva.com, you'll see the image for Hungry for History. And just click on that and it'll take you to the page that has the schedule of events, the program, um, all the meal specials at the different restaurants and the drink specials. That'll be the best way to find that. And if you want to, you can also pick up printed copies of the event program at the places that are hosting, that are participating. We're trying to get those out into the community so people can have a physical program if they want it to decide where they want to go. But we'll have plenty of those at the Visitor Center on Pleasant Valley Road. And Hannah, if somebody wants more information about Patsy Klein Historic House, where is the best first place for them to go? That would be on our website, which the best way to find it is just to Google Patsy Klein Historic House. And then our website will be right there with our business page and information about how to take a tour, information about the Patsy Klein block party, which is in conjunction with the Hungry for History event and anything else Patsy Klein related. So definitely check us out. You can always check out our Facebook or Instagram. We also have a Facebook event for our Hungry for History. Renee, thank you for pulling Hannah in and giving me all the details for this. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Janet. Thanks for having us. And Hannah, thank you. It was good to meet you. And I'm excited to see all of the people that now learn more about Patsy Klein when they come through the event this day. Thank you for having me. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley today, a few minutes after noon, so meet me here then.